So today's meeting is going to be covering the two upcoming events for next semester, which is going to be the Spark STEM Fest and the STC Summit. So during the presentation, feel free to put any questions you may have in the chat. Um, we are going to have a section at the end if you'd like to speak up audibly, and we will do our best to answer any and every question you may have. All right, so Spark STEM Fest. Um, some of you may have heard people talk about Otronicon. Unfortunately, they changed the name. So now it is Spark STEM Fest, which is going to be from February 17th through the 20th uh, in the spring. And this is a picture from last year. So the Spark STEM Fest uh, occurs annu annually at the Orlando Science Center. And it's essentially four days of workshops and exhibits. There's a lot of interactive um, things you can do. It's a science center, so there's going to be a lot of like, look at these bones and learn about this dinosaur type of thing. Um, however, the main part that we're going to be working on is the presentation about FTC. So our role in the Spark STEM Fest would be to essentially introduce the idea of technical communication to kind of like a variety of children. So it could be like elementary age, it could be middle school aged, kind of depends. It's gonna be a little bit of a mixed bag. Um, one of the most important aspects we're going to be talking about is not just what technical communication is, but how they can get involved and why they would want to. Um, we're also gonna be talking about what the FTC organization is, what we do, how they can get involved, maybe even put it on their list for like something they want to get involved in when they go to college. Um, I did go through a past presentation and it looks like we do um, sort of cover some more career related factors like how to write a resume, what um, employers are looking for in a cover letter, et cetera. Um, so as kind of an overview over what would be expected of us would be to kind of work as a team to create this presentation and to present it there in person. We did have a question earlier regarding the size of the audience. And usually it's kind of like a medium, sort of small medium audience. It's not gonna be like an entire auditorium. It's gonna be more of a classroom sized. And it's, as I said earlier, gonna be more elementary, middle school age children. So it's a great practice for um, public speaking if you wanna like practice public speaking and whatnot. Also, uh, I did have a note here at the bottom of the presentation for anyone who does not wanna be involved in the actual presentation aspects where you go in person and present, we would love your help on the designing aspect. So rather than talking and presenting, you could help behind the scenes on designing the presentation and the learning materials. So kind of a before we move on, would anyone be interested in volunteering for the event? And if not for the event, would you be interested in helping to design the material? So feel free to ask any questions about the event. Maybe if you are interested in learning more, we can pop you some more information about it in chat. And if you already have some ideas in your head about like what you would want to see in a presentation for kids on FTC and STEM, let us know. We would be glad to have any ideas. As for the STC Summit, so the Spark STEM Fest is sort of like a mini event compared to the STC Summit, mostly because the STC Summit is on a national level, whereas the Spark STEM Fest is a local level. And the summit occurs uh, May 14th through the 17th in spring. And it's kind of like a semi-professional educational conference. Um, it takes place in a different spot every year. And thankfully this year is a lot closer than it was last year. This year it is taking place in Atlanta, Georgia. And it will be a few days, about four or five of workshops, presentations, exhibits, all about um, sort of like the professional side of STC. So what to expect? 
educational sessions. That may not sound very fun, but it is because they are both fun and informative uh, sessions regarding aspects of technical communication. So it's not gonna be someone simply talking at you about one aspect. It's gonna be a whole broad range, a different variety of like, here's what I do regarding STC in my career, or here's what they do, here's what you could do, things like that. You can get a chance to hear firsthand accounts from experts in the field. So it's not just people that read about it in a book, it's people that lived it, people that experience it on a daily basis in their career and in their field. You also get a chance to learn new professional skills. So on their website, um, there is actually a section about potential credits you could earn professionally through a company. While we won't be getting those because we will be going as an organization and not a company, you will still be getting those professional skills, which would be very nice. Networking is another very, very big part of the summit. Um, not only do you get a chance to meet with professionals in the field, but you also get a chance to make um, sort of like non-professional regular friendships. So you can establish connections with people who are um, potentially in a career that you want to be in, and you can establish connections with people who you just wanted to be friends with because they're from a different state. And this is the slide regarding more questions. So there are a few things we did not cover in the presentation. Obviously, we haven't covered uh, cost and travel, preparation, et cetera. These are any questions regarding these, feel free to ask in the chat. Um, there was one thing that was actually really, really cool. If you go on the STC site, I can actually go ahead and put this into the general chat later, but they have um, a really cool presentation of their own about what to expect should you choose to go to the summit. And it's all about things from potential workshop ideas to potential speakers to dress code, because it's sort of a business casual. It'll tell you like what you should expect from behavior and whatnot. So it's actually really cool. It takes the anxiety out of not really knowing what you're doing. <laughs> so that's great. Um, Lastly, any upcoming events you may have questions on, obviously the Spark STEM Fest and the Summit are the two biggest, but we do have smaller events like the LinkedIn Workshop that you may be interested in. And if you have any like specific events you'd like to see in the coming meetings, let us know. And we can see if we can get some interest built on those. Maybe if you wanna see like a workshop on how to use Microsoft, Unfortunately, not everyone is Microsoft adept. It can be a little difficult. We could do something like that, but it's really up to you all. So yeah, any questions you may have, feel free to toss them in the chat. That is the information part. And race, yes. How would the travel be for the um, Spark STEM Fest as well as the summit? Would we all meet in the conference centers or um, so, how does it work? Yeah, that's a really good question. A um, uh, quick answer, Diana in chat, yes, it is in Atlanta, Georgia. And to Joy, um, for last year's, it looked like everyone met at the airport and took a plane together to the summit, but because it's a lot closer this year in Atlanta, yes. we were ideas of maybe doing like a bus system or potentially a bus just because it's cheaper. But the idea would be, yes, we would all meet first, I'm assuming, and then meet up. Unless obviously you were in a different state, then we'd have to consider maybe. Okay. There. Yeah. As for Thank the- Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. As for the Spark um, Fest, clearly that's a lot closer than Georgia. So we'd probably meet there at the center rather than together and then go. Okay, thank you so much for clearing that up for me.
Yeah. So if you're worried about like, oh, what if I have to take a plane and meet everyone there? What happens if it gets delayed or I get lost? Something like that. You don't have to worry about that. That is something that is a sort of logistical aspect that we will be able to figure out later on. So really the most important thing of this meeting is sort of to just get an idea of what these events are about and see if maybe you would be interested. Okay, thank you. Yes, and also saying yes now for interest is not a solidification of you going. So you don't have to panic if you end up not being able to go. As long as we know by the time we actually start solidifying who's going and who's not, it is perfectly fine. This is just, okay. are you interested? Mm -hmm. And when should our um, final, um, when should uh, our final decisions be made? Like, when should we tell you that we're certain that we will be able to go to these events? Um, that is an excellent question. It probably won't be for another month or two, because again, mm -hmm. sort of still figuring out the more important, like kind of like getting a general idea of vibe, like how many people are interested in going, but then um, planning it and whatnot. But once we actually get a specific date for when we need to know who's going and who is not, we will let you know. Okay, but thank I guarantee you. It won't be for another couple of weeks, so you should be fine. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much. I also believe getting like a lost number now helps us to kind of estimate totals and costs because the more people who participate, then the more I think costs can go down. And correct me if I'm wrong with that, John, because I know I can't remember if you guys needed a certain number of people and stuff. It's like funding with, uh, with SGA and stuff. And that's something like I'll be doing, I know, like next year, or like early next year to like request and stuff for funding on the number of people we have in it just then. Yeah, usually the sooner the better it is for requesting funding, but it won't be like so immediate that you won't even realize you'll be like, wait a second, hold on, I don't wanna go. Like there's definitely time for you to kind of consider and figure out if this is a commitment you wanna make. Are there any other questions, concerns? Uh, sorry about earlier my internet. Uh, cut out as I pretty much as soon as I turned on my mic. <laughs> but, but yeah, I'm back now in no case worries. there were any summit questions. Yeah, there were there was a question about um kind of like an expected um commitment date, like when we really need to have like actual yes I'm going answers. So for commitment date, the time frame that uh where going to be looking at for the fiscal year, or, or at least the best anticipated day, will be by the end of January. Um, since then, that gives us time to uh, give about a month to, you know, corral everyone who's officially said yes and get everyone up to speed on uh, just like filling out some paperwork and um, just making sure that all the steps are in place that they need to, um, uh, so I guess I'll back up a little bit and, uh, so the overall process for it is we get our yeses from everyone who says that they want to go. Um, we fill out some paperwork for the student government, which includes um, a travel roster, which is a list of everyone who wants to go, and a uh, funding request, which pretty much says how much the trip might cost based on how many people we have going, um, how many hotel rooms or um, flight tickets, or in our case, maybe like bus tickets or um, so hotel and transportation costs, all that together. Um, that's the paperwork process in a nutshell, a list of people and then funding requests. And we like, usually that takes about a month or a few weeks to get together. Um, and then after that, uh, we submit the form and it takes about a few more weeks for UCF to get back to us. And then a few weeks for us to actually get the money in our club's hands. So whole process of um, from getting our yeses to getting the money can take about a couple months because UCF gets a lot of those requests, which is why we're thinking early spring, um, end of January could be a good time frame to get those final yeses in so that before the end of spring hits, we have our confirmations like, right, everyone is in who said yes, they want to go. Um, UCF has heard from us, received paperwork, that's the thing. And now we just need to, you know, 
buy the hotel rooms, buy the tickets. We're good to go uh, before, uh, you know, just to avoid the situation of um, being too late, um, being too late on things. So yeah, in short, uh, yeah, early spring into January, although we're a little flexible with it and um, as we move close to it, um, the team will be providing updates, making plans, all that good stuff. I was wondering, will we be attending all three days of each event? For Otronicon, uh, required. Uh, you can attend for uh, one of the days. Mm -hmm. So it's up to the team how many days uh, we and our members want to volunteer at Otronicon. Uh, they give us a time range and we can pick one to all of those days to be present there. But uh, no member is required to uh, be there for all the time. Um, perfectly able to, but not required. For the summit, though, since it is um, a trip, it mm -hmm. will uh, you will be have to. Oh, sorry, be required to um, be there for all that time, uh, since we have a departure date and then an mm -hmm. arrival back date. Sort of okay. a pop Thank in you. here. Something I did notice on the STC summit site was that they do recommend taking breaks. So as much as they really want you to be able to experience every workshop they have, they did recommend that if you need to take a break and miss a workshop that you can. Okay, thank you so much. Yep, and I confirm that um, it's, uh, it's a great conference and there's, uh, it's a decently big conference too. There's a lot of people from throughout STC, um, like all the communities in the nation who go to it. So um, a lot of, great experiences to meet and meet and greet people uh, mm -hmm. but especially uh, if you're an introvert and yeah. I know that I also have a like a battery um, like like as much as I enjoy it uh, definitely take breaks because uh, at the end of three days if you've done nothing but talk to people uh, a little bit a little bit tiring uh, you'll be like wow that was great and then go to sleep for like 20 hours <laughs> so Leave definitely do take breaks <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I definitely understand that. Yeah. But yeah, doubling uh, down on that and with the summit, um, it's mm -hmm. a definitely, it's a great opportunity on its own and mm -hmm. uh, an even greater opportunity if you uh, even just visit uh, a couple or a few, um, or even if you want to frequently, the STC meetings that happen every month. Uh, like the Florida yeah. chapter meetings that bring in guest speakers or um, when we have guest speakers come our way from STC Florida. Uh, so that that way, in case any of them go to the summit, you'll be able to, um, yeah, you already know them and it'll be great to meet them in person. Um, I had some experiences like that at the summit where, um, you know, just getting to see people who, like I'd been on their STC calls before and then, you know, got to see them in person and uh, just a good memory, a good time and gives you a good starting point of, um, talking to people but overall everyone there is super approachable and mm -hmm. it's just as much of a good learning experience as it is a good networking and uh, getting to know people experience as well in the tech com industry are you planning to go this year john because i know you're still in like stc and stuff like the orlando chapter and like people in the orlando chapter they're going or now yeah this upcoming year uh, i'm going to be looking into going and uh, yeah i think they're uh, will be a couple from um yeah from the florida chapter who will be going like last year um one did uh, laurie meyer she went and it was great to see her in person so yeah this year i'll uh, be planning to go as well and the plus side is that uh, if you're a current student um, or as long as you're still registered as a student up to spring uh, there is a plan uh, I mean, there is a registration plan where you can get free attendance by um, volunteering to help out at the conference too. So that's how last school year we were able to um, get our group of five to go. Um, yeah, we're able to go for free um, in part because of fundraising from UCF and other sources, but also just we each volunteer to help out at the conference and that takes away your registration cost if you're a student who helps out. So yeah, definitely make the most of that because um, it can be 
uh, it can leave a little dent in your pocket. Um, but if you're a student who makes the most of that opportunity, uh, goes and helps out, then uh, there's a lot, a lot to gain from it, uh, especially monetarily. And those who aren't students or have graduated can still go. Uh, it would mainly be uh, either out of pocket, um, or you can, uh, if your job has a, uh, if your job has a program where they can uh, like pay for conferences, uh, like if you can go through your job's uh, funding, that's also an option. So yeah, if there's a will, there's a way, especially as a student. Did you do the, you said you did the volunteering. Can you explain like a little bit of the tasks you did and stuff? Or like what, like kind of what it, it entails or like how much of like the time commitment is to volunteering? Yeah, definitely. Uh, so with volunteering, it really uh, was, uh, it was a very straightforward, I'd say. So throughout the conference, you're going to different presentations and workshops. Uh, there's like each hour, for example, there's like a handful of workshops going on in different rooms at the same time. So you just pick and choose which ones you want to go, uh, like if you're typically running through it. Um, and when you're volunteering, you kind of get a set of tasks to do throughout each of the days. Like um, on day one, you uh, get signed up to help out at this conference happening at 11, this conference happening at one, this conference at three. And uh, once you're signed up for that, pretty much your job is to just be like a presentation assistant for whoever is delivering the workshop or presentation there. Um, and uh, most of the time it's pretty simple. You just offer to, you know, like if they need technical help, you're there for them and not anything incredibly technical since if they need that, then there are workers for it. But if they like need help changing slides or doing like time checks or um, anything like that, um, you might be there to like help hand out flyers to people in the presentation, uh, do like uh, check attendance or like hit recording buttons. So uh, pretty just simple, uh, simply like helping them out during the presentation if they need little things or helping them keep on track and um, compose during uh, the presentation. So you might do a handful of those. And honestly, it's pretty much just like attending the presentation, but with some extra steps. So you're not really going too much out of your way. Um, and the second form of volunteering is to help out at the registration desk for the conference, which is basically, um, they have volunteers there who are like handing out, um, you know, like getting people signed in on the computer and handing them name badges. You just are there to like help them out as they do that in case they need a hand with anything. So yeah, pretty, uh, pretty simple stuff. And it feels seamless. So really volunteering is um, definitely the way to go. Good. I thought I, I saw Diana's hand raised. Oh, sorry. Both sorry Diana. about that. No, yeah, I just had a quick question um, because I'm the type that will want to go to every workshop there. Do you know if they record any of them in case you can't go to everyone? <laughs> you want to watch it later or something? I don't know. Yeah, and um, they aren't recorded. However, each presenter uh, does send out their slides and there's a common place. Uh, they actually build an app uh, for each conference where all the presenters can upload uh, messages and information. So um, each presenter uploads their slides after their presentation is done. Okay. Um, and if you aren't able, uh, yeah. Group, there you go. Uh, something that we did last year is we had each member, um, cause some of us like split up and went to different presentations. So we each took notes of the presentations that we went to and then just talked about them afterwards. So ah. uh, even if you aren't able to go to all of them, uh, if you're going with the group, good opportunity to, you know, hear out, hear from the others how things went too. Mm -hmm. Got it. Thank you. 